shifting, not double clutching like you should. Yeah, just great. Uh, I was supposed to go to a couple car shows and maybe a meet today, but you know, I just I just lost my mood because of that. But what I'm doing right now is checking my intercooler hoses. Uh, I may be going to an autocross tomorrow. Hopefully everything goes as planned. If I do, everything should be good. Uh, for a lot of you who do have front mount intercoolers, these hose clamps and these hose couplers are something you want to check on a regular basis. Um, especially up here near the throttle body. This has come loose once before. And I'm in the process of probably replacing all the stock hose clamps that came with the, with the kit um, with newer and better ones. Also, since the bumper is off the car, I figured I'd go ahead and try the emblem uh, red. I know a lot of you guys have mentioned painting it black. I'm going to try it out red. Um, if I don't like it, I can easily take the bumper off and paint it black. So I'll try it out. But I'm going to paint these black. I already scored them uh, with uh, some 250 grit sandpaper because you can see these silver pieces through the grill and I don't like it. So I'm waiting for that spray paint to dry. I detailed the engine bay with CarPro Pearl and my engine detailing brush and everything looks nice and crispy. Looks like uh, it just came off the showroom floor. Well, maybe not really, not that clean, um, but just a quick power wash to get all the dirt and all that pollen that we've been having the past few days, or I should say a couple weeks. Got all that off and uh, just started spraying everything around. So gives it a nice satin sheen which is what i like so i even gave the carbon fiber hood a nice wipe down so that's nice and clean still looks brand new even all the rubber lines against the firewall nice and clean properly dressed the intake manifold which is one thing you will see when you pop the hood of my car that's all nice and clean that's a pain in the ass to clean if you guys have ever cleaned that before and all the trims too all right we're just over here at casey's house casey is already gone I have to give this car a nice good wash, so here we go. Right, gonna give it a quick wash. Really not much to film. Just gonna leave the car here for a little bit. All right, Casey, yeah, if you're watching this, you've only been gone for a few days, but I'm gonna give your car a nice good wash. That's right, it's dirty as hell, bro. So one of the things we have to address on Casey's car is he mentioned uh, before he left that his car overheated so I just have it in intelligent mode and I'm just gonna baby it until we get it addressed when he gets back so hopefully it's nothing just a an air bubble caught in the system just gonna clean it up with some Adams wheel cleaner wheel bucket my pressure washer nozzle this is a cheap pressure washer nozzle I got on Amazon it's been great I think this is about I don't know 20 or 30 dollars or so uh, but yeah really helps I like to short handle instead of the, having that big wand at the end it really helps this wheel brush i've had for a long time this is an easy detail brush it's been a while this is a chemical guys detailing brush great awesome brush um, one of my favorite brushes is the tough shine brush this is a, a good brush for cleaning tires and stuff um, just some miscellaneous brushes there but yeah i'll have a link in the description for this I want to try out this is the uh, Masterson's car care mystic snow foam people said this creates great foam and has good lubricity so I'm gonna go ahead and try it out Oh, it's a little bright. All right, everything is nice and clean. I'm gonna put the car back in the garage and let her rest until he gets back. And we're back. Oh, come on, don't scrape, don't scrape. So we're back in my car now. Casey's car has been delivered, nice and clean, freshly washed. I think I cleaned this car better than I cleaned my car. Time to go get some E85 because I am out. Rule of thumb, people. If you're towing a boat, you should not be in the left lane. Come on now. All right, so we're over here at the Corn Hub or E85 station. Um, just want to show you the fill up process. I put about six gallons in each one. So I filled up the first one. That's at six gallons. 
and E85 is expensive today. It's $2.97 a gallon. Five gallon jugs and a two gallon one just in case I want to, you know, tighten up my mixture. Two gallons for $60, which is kind of expensive. This may be a little bit overkill, but using the lift to wax your car just makes everything so much easier. Waxing, I got my random orbital right here and my red pad. And the wax that I'm using today is the Colony 845. I've been using this on and off. So what I do when I use Colony 845, I put one of these spray triggers on there because uh, you don't want to lay this on there thick. So I just spray it onto the pad. And using a spray bottle really helps you uh, not overuse the product. This is a pain in the butt to take off if you use too much, so which is why I use a spray bottle. And not only that, it helps save you product. This bottle should last you a very long time. And there it is, nice and shiny, good clarity, clarity to the paint. So one thing I did off camera was give it a nice good wash, good clay. I decontaminated the exterior paint using G on iron. Absolutely love that stuff. Um, it's a good wheel cleaner actually. Uh, let me get that in focus first. Um, but I also give it a nice light polish, not a full kit paint correction um, with Sonax Perfect Finish. And I topped it off with a Jeskar Power Lock Plus as my sealant. And then I topped that off with a wax. My wax was, as you saw earlier, was a Kona 845. I think that combo alone gives your paint nice, good clarity. Now keep in mind, this was ceramic coated about a year ago. That's long gone. I already compounded all that stuff off. And I will say that I prefer the look of the uh, sealant and wax a lot better than I do the ceramic coating. Now ceramic coating is a lot easier maintenance, but I, I think, um, in my honest opinion, I a lot of detailers have this opinion also, is that a nice good wax and a good um, polish will get your paint a lot better clarity than uh, your, your basic ceramic coating that everyone's using. And Call Night 845 is no secret. They don't do any advertisement. Um, I'll have the link in the description below of all the stuff that I use in this uh, nice good uh, maintenance wash or maintenance detail uh, regimen that I just did. And maybe I should do a nice detail video later on. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so remember my Quick Jack video where I told you guys they sent me the wrong product? Well, it turns out they saw the video and they reached out to me and they wanted to make everything right. So this is the 110 power unit. They sent me the 12 volt one, which requires an external battery to operate like a jumper pack or whatnot. So I'm gonna open it up, take a look, make sure everything is there. And they didn't really exactly say what to do with the old 12 volt unit. So I'll reach out to them and see exactly what they want me to do with it. I can send it back. No issues with that because I pretty much have no use for it. All right, I was not expecting this. So new fittings, new hoses, but check this out. For some reason, these hoses look a lot better than the ones they sent me. I don't know if there's any difference, but they seem more sturdy. So more blocks. Mm, smells new. Awesome. So for some of you guys who are wondering about the carbon fiber hood and the stock intercooler shroud, yes, it does fit. So I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna line this up. Oh, I have it backwards. And as you can see, most of the holes line up and you just put your push tabs in each of those holes and it should hold it right in. So one advantage the VIS racing carbon fiber hood has that the Cybon does not. This shroud is very beneficial if you still run the stock top mount intercooler. So this is designed to force air into your top mount intercooler. If you don't have it, air is simply going to go around the intercooler, which will decrease your performance and the functionality of your top mount intercooler. So very important to have this on there. I don't have any scientific data, but it does make sense to me. So I've been trying three different soaps right now. You see the Adams Ultra Foam, the uh, Masters Car Care Mystic Snow Foam, and the Watermelon Snow Foam from Chemical Guys. Same as the Honeydew Snow Foam, except this is watermelon. Really like the scent on this one, by the way. This has a grape scent. I'm not exactly sure what the scent is, 
on this one right here. Uh, but this Masters Clock Hair Mystic Snow Foam really surprised me. It doesn't produce the most foam, I'll tell you that right off the bat. Um, decent lubricity, by the way, and also this one sticks to the car as far as foam goes a lot longer than these two. Now, your results may vary as far as you might have different water quality, different pressure washer, uh, different foam cannon than I do, so that might play a factor if you guys decide to try um, any of these. So this one is you know, a timeless classic. They're honeydew and their watermelon snow foam. Great foam. It produces the most foam out of these two. Also decent lubricity. Now the Adams Ultra Foam Shampoo is the most expensive. Now this requires, and it says it on the directions, four ounces of product in the inside of your foam cannon. Now these only require two ounces. So I think this is about $15, $16 on Amazon. These are about 10 or 12. So yeah, a lot, be lot better value with these two. But what I do like about the Ultra Foam Shampoo from Adams is that I think it has the best lubricity out of these two, which is probably one of the most important things when, when it comes to uh, soaps. And also this one doesn't dry out in the sun as fast as these two. So most of us do wash our cars out in the sun. So we're, we're, we're not fortunate, to, fortunate enough to have a, a carport where we can wash our cars um, under shade. So that's just the reality of it. Um, but yeah, you can't go wrong with any of these. Just keep in mind, this is the most expensive one. So yeah, and this one really surprised me. I, I think, I don't know, this might be my new favorite right now, to be honest with you. So I just wanna let you guys know about the um, snow foams that I've been trying out lately. Which, like I said, you can't go wrong with either one.